I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the drive home to Hawkesbury, where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property, and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live, love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you, so let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this episode. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy, and today I'm lucky enough to be joined by Catherine Hams, naturopath and local resident. How are you, Catherine? I'm good, thank you. And how are you going today, Rachel? I am going exceptionally well. Um, I do oh. see a little bit of haze in the sky, though. I don't know whether everybody else is experiencing it in the Hawkesbury. Apparently, there's a few burn-offs in the Hawkesbury and abroad today. Are you seeing it over your way? I definitely am. I could smell it when I was in Richmond about mm -hmm. half an hour ago. Mm -hmm. So people that have asthma and things like that, I think they may have put even a warning out on the TV about it, but okay. just to take note and to look after themselves with the asthma. But I think when we have fog and it holds it down, that's really bad too. It doesn't give it the chance to escape. Yeah, and the sun can't get through to burn it off either. So, um, no, it's not that I'm a meteorologist, though, Rachel. <laughs> I've not got that cap yet. I'm working towards it. I've got a I rain don't... gauge. I might be partially there. <laughs> I've seen your rain gauge, and I think it does work. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> we need the rain, though. Oh, yeah, well, that was what my point was. There hasn't been much rain yeah. lately. I was talking yeah. to one of the farmers of our clients that work out west way out west and they said that they were expecting rain in May from November last year. They still hadn't had a drop oh. since November. Yeah. So yeah. when you don't have dam water and you don't have river water to tap into, um, you know, yeah. it's pretty tight when it comes to the water. It'd be yeah. a very hard life in some ways, wouldn't it, to be out on the land and to be dependent on how the weather's going to be. And if you weren't any good at doing rain dances, you'd be pretty well, you know, <laughs> That'd be it, I reckon. We have to get our brass L rods out and start sort of divining that's for it. water, that's, chasing yeah, and water, dancing. <laughs> and Doing dancing on the way. You know, that's right. Well, we should get Melissa Follington involved with that. She does the women's circles mm. and the dancing, and then you're pretty good at the women's circle style of things as well, and the, the yep. catching up with everybody and and talking and yeah. women's retreats. So I think it's a, yeah. a definite weekend in the making. Yep, that's it. So talking what were you up that? to on the weekend? Yes, a good point. Um, I actually went to the Holistic Wellness and Spiritual Expo, which was held out at Panthers at North Richmond yeah. on the weekend. And that was a lot yeah. of fun. Uh, yeah. Lots of people, different modalities. Um, there was a medium there, Alan Hamill. I'm not too sure whether people are aware with um, him or not, but he actually listens to the animal spirits and mm. guides and things like that. And it was just fascinating. Um, I had... Uh, and there was lots of vendors out there. There was lots of people that had some really good stuff, crystals, and mm. Um, mm. there's even a tie-dye person there, I think, and there's some other clothing. Oh, yeah, and Melissa had a doTERRA, the um, oils that were there, and her right. display yeah. was absolutely exquisite. I believe the flowers mm. were done by um, 101 House, and that was fantastic. Mm. They looked beautiful as per usual. A big shout-out to Laura. How are you? Mm. And, um, yeah, everybody was there, and um, there was some massage therapists. There was some kinesiologists. There was some mm. um, counsellors. There was all sorts of, you know, modalities. Mm. So Very good. Yeah, yeah. No, mm. lot, lots of fun and um, lots of things to do and uh, mm. lots of oils purchased. But I had an interesting um, – I, I was just getting coffee, as a matter of fact, as I was walking out of the – it was sort of, um, I don't know, in the afternoon and I was grabbing coffee as a break at the, the fair and I came back and as I was walking past the medium um, table, he said, oh, I need to speak to you. Like, oh, why do you need to speak to me? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's just like we're just having a bit of a chat. And then um, my dog that's passed away, Nigel, came into the conversation. And I don't that's know anybody lovely. that's, yeah, that's listening that has had a dog that's been very special pass away or, you know, I know, Catherine, you've had um, a dog yep. pass recently. And everybody, yep. you know, they're part of the family. They're part of the, the bigger picture. And it was just nice to – and things that they knew about this dog, um, for those of you who mm. don't know, my dog was paralysed before he, he passed away and the vets couldn't work it out. 
And that's exactly what the medium said. This dog that um, is with you every day was paralysed. You sat with it for the last week. You couldn't, you know, you couldn't do anything. He didn't know what to do, but the dog wants you to know that he's okay and he's passed to the other side. And I was just thinking, yeah. how can this medium know this information that, you know, there's so many different ways an animal can pass and, um, you know, for him to know that it was paralysed and that I sat with it for the last week and that it was you know, part of the family and so forth. It was just, um, you know, it was good to good to hear, I suppose. So, yeah, interesting. I think that, um, you know, when you people are sceptical and I'm in respect to everyone, their beliefs and thoughts and, you know, the, I, you know, all that sort of jazz or whatever. But, I mean, at the end of the day, we all have um, those inner beliefs and when someone comes up and they do, they particularise aspects of something to you that no one could have known you you really if you're a non-believer your hat's got to come off and you got to scratch your head and go hmm, well might have to rethink this one again yeah absolutely there was another circumstance actually and I'm sure other people listening on the line have had their own experiences too but this wasn't to do with me this is with one of the people in the crowd he did a demonstration of the actual uh, mediumship and there was a lady in the crowd and he and he sort of pointed across the people there was two people sitting mm. beside one another then he sort of honed in on on this particular lady and he said oh you visited the grave lately of the mother figure and that was her mother-in-law as it turned mm. out and this mother-in-law the tombstone you've changed that completely you've just redone that and you've made it look pretty and mm. um she wanted to let you know that everything's okay and that there was a list that you helped her with prior to her passing and that's exactly what this lady did. She'd gone to the tombstone recently. She'd redone the whole tombstone with the kids. She, she spoke to the mother-in-law, as she always does. And um, she actually showed us photos in her phone of where she changed the tombstone. And she'd only been there recently, like within days of the yeah. actual mediumship. And yeah. she had written a list with this particular lady prior to her passing and she yeah. had gone through everything and she does talk to her on a regular basis. And as you say, whether you're a non-believer or not, you've really got to ask the question, can these all be, too, you know, coincidences or yeah. are there actual things yeah. that do happen that, you know, are yeah. unexplainable but explainable in some other ways? Yeah. And I think that's a topic, it's like so many others that could be so long, like how long is a piece of string? <laughs> but the thing is at the end of the day, as long as you respect each other to have your own beliefs, that's really all that matters. And, you know, yes. if you get comfort in it, that's great too. So, No, you know, I completely I'm agree with that. that happened for you. I think that would have comforted you even. Yes, yeah, it's, it's nice to, to hear that they're doing okay and that, mm. um, you know, Nigel as well and, um, you know, mm. now I've got little Brucey, he's taken his, not taken his place but taken his spot mm. on the, the table. So, um, yeah. you know, he's part of the family now and um, mm. he's a very big part of what we all do, So, which is terrific. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe you um, had an interesting discussion with Sandra, your co-naturopath in regards to um, all things Hashimoto's and, and other germs. Um, we tell me about that. We did. We Well, we actually went to Thyroid 101 and it was regarding how the thyroid and how the hormones work and how it actually um, goes either into hypo or hyperthyroidism, which then can develop to Graves or to mm. Hashimoto's. Um, but it also links in with your adrenals and adrenal fatigue, a lot of things, the body interlinks. Look, it was a really good talk. The trouble is with these things when you're talking on these sort of physical and what happens to your body, your terminology can get to a point where it gets a little bit overwhelming for people who do not um, are not in that practice of speaking like that. And, I mean, it was a good chat, but I think I had learnt lessons that maybe we needed to actually break it down into smaller bits. And I, I own that. I'll own that because it's the feedback that everyone gives us and you would be the same, I think, Rachel, that the feedback's the most invaluable source of being able to guide a program or a talk mm -hmm. or anything you do for someone into the proper aspect that actually works. And without the feedback, we don't know what works. So mm. I don't mm. ever look at feedback as negative. I look at it as a positive way to make yeah. a change because without it, we don't know. 
Yeah, and that's so, what we love yeah. about these shows is that the questions, yeah. comments that we get on a regular basis about yeah. what we're doing and what people want to hear, it's so important. But I think it's a valuable yeah. point that you make in, in a practitioner's world. Those sorts mm. of things are like us saying, okay, well, this is a phone, whereas that might be a, there might be a technical term for that particular phone. And it's the same thing with what you do. You know, there's technical yeah. terms which you just use as normal, the everyday Language. vernacular. Whereas mm. uh, some people just are not familiar with that, and that's okay mm. too. And as you say, mm. you can tweak it and change it and make it to mm. um, to suit the, um, the the lay person, as we all are when it comes to these sorts of things. And you're bringing some great mm. topics to the fore because a, a lot of topics mm. that people don't realise, or you know, thyroid's mm. a big one, Hashimoto's mm. is another big one, and not only mm. people just locally, but you're getting them from Florida, US, you've got UK, mm. you've got people yeah. everywhere tuning into your show which is fantastic i think what's happened with the uh, thyroid discussion is there's become a thyroid madness and people jump on bandwagons and they do it with a lot of things it's like the next phase is this or the next fat or whatever and it's the same with health as well it's the same with dieting there'll be a particular diet that comes and everyone jumps on the bandwagon of that diet and it can be dangerous to jump Mm. onto those sort of bandwagons Mm -hmm. and so I mean, from our point of view of Sandra and I, because we both suffer hashi, is it was to try and make it that people actually understood what it was about, the symptoms. Because the thing is that you could run off saying, oh, I've got hashi modus, blah, 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 but you may have something different and you're not looking after it, it could develop. So, uh, yeah, you're totally correct. Yeah, we're hitting a lot of places and it's and that's because this is a worldwide topic too. But, mm. um, yeah, thank you. It's good. And we'll keep going with those and we'll just keep learning as we do. Mm. No, terrific. Mm. That's fantastic. Mm. And talking about yeah. learning, I'm going to um, catch up with the Mayor of Hawkesbury City Council next week um, yeah. on Tuesday at 12 noon. And anybody mm. that's got any questions or comments for the Mayor that want to chime in at that time, I will put a broadcast online. Um, But it's going to be fascinating just hearing what a day in the life of a mayor is like, what the responsibilities are for her and how she conducts herself in the office and the best way forward for the Hawkesbury Council and also for the local constituents. I think it's going to be a fascinating topic. Yeah, I think a lot of people will, will, I hope they do tune into that because it's an open opportunity now for them to be able to as you say, ask those questions, or even if they can't, Rachel, they could email you or message you on Facebook questions so that you could even have some list of questions ready to go for it and, you know, they could tune in later and listen to the answers to that. So, you know, if they can't get on board when you're on board because of work, there's always an open opportunity to go beforehand and, you know, work out what they want to say and get the answers. Oh, definitely, as there is, um, you know, contacting yourself. And talking about that, this is Catherine's number, just in case wow. people want to get in contact with you. <laughs> so we are going to give Rachel a clap. She got my phone number up and I didn't High have five. to ask her. High five. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Um, but I also had one other question during the week um, from people in regards to deposits and people putting deposits down on houses. We had one particular situation on the weekend where a buyer really liked a property, um, but they weren't in a position to sign contracts, but they were willing to put a deposit down because they had to speak to their solicitor on Monday. Now, sometimes that is amenable to both parties being the vendor, the seller, and also the purchaser, but sometimes it's not. And in this case, it was. All parties agreed that it was the weekend. They weren't able to speak to their solicitor, so they were going to wait till Monday and then sign contracts, move forward with that on that particular day, which is absolutely fine for a lot of reasons because I think all purchasers in good faith go to an open home thinking they're going to buy a house, they want to put a deposit down and they want to move forward with it, not, oh, I don't want to sign a contract, I don't want to put a deposit down and those sorts of things. So... It is possible for people to, in good faith, put a deposit down. It doesn't necessarily mean it holds the property like it used to do. That They used to call that a holding deposit or some sort of thing like that, but that's not the way it works these days. Um, You know, unless you have a deposit, unless you have a signed contract and an exchange contract, you're not officially off the market. So it really needs to be an agreement, a gentleman's agreement between two parties, I suppose, Mm -hmm. that they're okay with that process Mm -hmm. and they're okay to, you know... um, 
as it were, accept the deposit yeah. and then one day move forward with the exchange of contracts, which they've done in this case and it's been a good outcome for everybody. So yeah. if anybody's got any questions in regards to real estate or any questions in regards to exchanges or deposits in regards mm. to those properties, I'm happy to help. I can be contacted uh, on 4577 9964 or website au. And Catherine, do you have a website that anybody can go to? Oh, yeah, Facebook they can go page. to the Hypnotherapy and Wellness Hub on Facebook. So that's one way of contacting me at the moment. Or um, they can message you and I know you'll put them in contact with me as well. So, no, yeah, terrific. no. Yeah. And uh, anything Very else good. come up? Um, there was quite a few questions this week, but we just sort of um, took a few key ones from the, mm. the list. Mm. Was there anything else that mm. you wanted to cover off before we finish up today? Um, no, not really. I think that, you know, it's good that you just mentioned that about the um, deposit and everything. Can they actually get contracts beforehand from you, Rachel, so that they can get their solicitors to look at it? Or is that something they don't do? It's quite a normal practice now, yes, that people mm. can get a copy of the contract prior to looking at a property and show mm. that to their solicitor. So that because a lot of properties, there's multiple peoples and there's wanting to look at it and there's multiple offers so you don't want to miss out on that particular property and it's always good mm. as you say Catherine to get ahead of the game and make sure that you're organized to get a copy of the contract from the agent that you're looking at the property through have a yeah. look through it yourself I mean the contract's made up of many things including the details of the property the 149 mm. certificate which is the zoning it will tell you whether the roads are going to be wide and whether there's other things you yeah. know flood zones involved where, mm. where the drainage diagram um that's attached to the contract as well there's so many things that are attached to the contract um that mm. you really need to be aware of so as mm. you say it's good to to get ahead of the game and and have a look at that yeah. beforehand and then people are able yeah. to feel confident with that process of mm. okay i've been through the contract i've seen my solicitor tick that yeah. box and uh, we've spoken about this before. There is a due diligence download that we can provide people when they're looking yeah. at properties. So if anybody wants a copy of that, we're more than happy to provide that mm. um, and just help yeah. them and give them the extra seal of approval whilst they're heading mm. towards buying their first home or even selling their first yeah. home. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, that's. I just wondered that and I wondered if that was something that was a practice you did. But, I mean, as you said, uh, you need to have that exchange anyway. So it still really mm -hmm. keeps it open, doesn't it, till that final exchange? Absolutely, yeah. The property yep. is not um, unconditional until it's actually gone through the cooling off period and it and mm. expires on that cooling off period. Yeah. And once that happens and the deposit's been paid, the property then moves into escrow. So it's all a matter of making sure that the properties um, – and, and I guess – that everybody does what they need to do to make it all happen yeah. and come together. But I think there can be some confusion around it that, okay, well, if I put the 0.25% deposit, it's my property and nobody else can mm. buy it. But that's not actually yeah. the case. And there is no yeah. such thing as a holding deposit. It's just a deposit mm. that you've put down in good faith um, heading yeah. towards exchange and, mm. you know, signature and exchange mm. of those contracts to be able to move forward into the calling mm. off period and then to the unconditional um, to settlement. Yeah, process. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Well, um, thanks for being on the line, everybody, and thank you, Catherine, for being on the line no as worries. per usual. Um, I'm not going to be here next week because I'm going to the Australian um, chapter of the Feng Shui Conference, which is being held in Melbourne. So I might get Catherine to um, hop on the line and say hi to everybody for me next week for if sure. that's okay with you. Yeah. That would be terrific. Yeah. And um, anybody that's got any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. We love seeing people on the line and we love, you know, hearing what people have to say. Any local events, any sporting organisations or any people in business that want to get the word out there about their great business, we're happy to help in that yeah. regard too. So um, thank you for everyone being online and we'll catch up with everybody next week. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.